Hello everyone, so this is going to be a quick video on the Create Universal App Template, which is a way for you to get started with making apps that can run both mobile as well as web using a single code base. In this case, we're using Expo as well as Next for our front end, TRPC and Prisma for our back end, Tamagui for styling, and Clerk for both mobile as well as web auth. And here's a demo that you can look at. Um, we'll quickly go over the motivation behind the app, the different tech stacks that we chose, as well as the folder structure, and then we'll dive into how you can get started with a step-by-step -step tutorial. First of all, this app is inspired by the Create T3 app, as well as Solito. T3 app is this template made by Theo and his community. Um, basically, just run this terminal, run this command in your terminal, and they'll generate a full stack type-saved Next.js app for you. Um, Next.js on the front end, um, Next.js on the back end as well, using TRPC to communicate between the client as well as the server. It's going to have Prisma, Tailwind, Next Auth, and all of these things all set up for you. So you can just start coding your app right away. For my personal use, the only thing that's missing here from this fantastic stack is the mobile side of things. So this does not cover any native side at all. And that's kind of where T3 Turbo came about is this repo made by Julius Marminge, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, and it basically puts your Next.js app as well as your Expo app in a mono repo. So, you know, you can think of this as everything in the T3 app, but with an Expo app laid on top of it. Um, it's fantastic as well. Now, in my opinion, the only thing that's lacking from this um, is the code share in your front-end app. So in this example repo, your Expo app will be writing in React Native, while your Next app will be written in um, React. And that's where we can take a look at the other side of this, which is Solito. So Solito is a tiny wrapper on top of React Navigation, as well as Next.js, that allows you to write in React, use, I mean, write in React Native, use React Native for web to compile that into React app, into React code. Um, basically allows you to write cross-platform apps using React Native. You'll, so you'll write in React Native, um, and on the web side of things, it's going to be transpiled into Next.js. On the mobile side of things, of course, it's just going to be React Native. And almost all of your front-end code here will be shared. And of course, the keyword here is front-end code. This is not really a full stack app library um, or like app template. And so I guess that's kind of where we step in um, with the create universal app. It's going to be a full stack app template uh, using TRPC and Clerk Auth as well as Prisma in the back end. Um, and, and in the front end, we'll be using Next.js with Expo um, using Solito to help us glue these things together. So that's kind of uh, what this app is. The dream is to write once and run everywhere really smoothly. Now I'll talk a little bit more about the tech stacks as well as the reasons for choosing them. I think all of these are pretty straightforward. React Native Web is pretty mature nowadays used by companies like Uber as well as Twitter for their web app. Um, Prisma and TRPC are pretty standard as well. These are all things that you would find in the Create T3 app. Um, the two things that really deviate from that is Clerk Auth as well as Tamagui for styling instead of Native Wind or Tailwind. So Clerk Auth um, instead of of Next Auth, uh, Next Auth doesn't work on mobile, so I guess we're canceling that out. But there are a few other solutions that would work on mobile as well as the web, um, like Firebase and Superbase. You can both get them work on um, Expo as well as as uh, web. But in my opinion, uh, using Clerk, there's a few small things that are really nice that I like it. So for example, it provides you with a component like Sign In, and everything that you wrap in Signed In um, will only get displayed if the user is signed in. Um, and they give you a whole bunch of hooks built into both React as well as React Native. Um, so it's very convenient to use. The, what I've done here is I have kind of just merged those two together into a single utility um, page. We'll, we'll look into that a bit later. Uh, but if you want to use these other ones, I'm, I'm sure you can get them to work as well. I just found Clerk to be a little bit easier to set up. The only downside is that they are a startup, so they might die in a few years. But, you know, 
so is super base. But uh, they uh, oh, you have to pay to use their mobile authentication, and it's it's quite hefty. Uh, so, but the the OAuth works fine enough that I think it's it's a good enough solution on the mobile. So that's Clerk. And Tamagui, this one might be more controversial than Clerk. Why Tamagui instead of Native Wind? So first off, what is Tamagui? Tamagui was officially released like 10 days ago as of recording. Um, and it's, it's quite a lot, but on a high level, um, they are a compiler, they are a core, as well as they are a UI library. So the compiler, what it does is that it compiles your CSS and JS um, on both web and mobile into you know, whatever the platform primitives are. So in the case of web, they will turn all of your um, all of your CSS and JS that you write in React Native into very pure CSS uh, classes. Um, and they'll also do a whole bunch of optimizations like tree flattening, um, like getting rid of redundant stylings and things like that. So on the web side of things, it's fantastic. So that's kind of what the compiler is. Um, compiler, uh, core, as well as a UI library. So the core is a set of core uh, components that they have made, like stack, xstack, uh, stacks, as well as text, that is aimed to replace the native view um, as well as the, the native text that we see from React Native. So the main benefit, I guess, is that they allow you to use the Tamagui props. So for example, instead of writing style, padding, blah, 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 um, you can just do P equals, you know, like what, whatever, you know, three or four. Um, and all, And they also have a really nice overall theme library um, all built within in, in the core. Uh, and they also have a UI library, so that's why I'm saying that they're quite a bit. And you know honestly maybe I'll switch it to native win as I, I'm currently trying Tamagui out. It's not bad. Um, but this UI library is kind of like Daisy UI. So it'll give you like a set of like components that you can use like buttons and things like that that you can just directly import. Let me show you some of them. Um, Docs, so the core, theme, Tamagui, so the buttons, and they all look quite nice. The only downside I think is that like it's very early. Um, everything works surprisingly well despite being early, but I guess there's probably going to be bugs and edge cases that you'll run into that may not get fixed as quick, whereas Native Wind or Tailwind is quite mature nowadays. I guess the, the other sound downside if you're used to native wind is that you gotta learn Tamagui. It's kinda like learning Tailwind all over again, having to remember some of the, the primitives and things like that. Um but I'm hoping by using Tamagui it's gonna force me to be a better um it's gonna force me to put certain components into styled components and things like that and just push me down the route of better design system in my code. So maybe I'm being overly optimistic here, but that's kind of why I chose Tamagui. And their landing page is just, it's just, just very good. Um, all made by one person as well. But yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of the tech stacks. So now we'll dive into how this actually works by looking into the folder structure. Hopefully, this can provide you with a better understanding of the stack. Um, and then we'll dive into how it, you can actually get started by, by doing like a live demo. So first of all, the folder structure, you will have two main folders. You have the apps folder and you have the packages folder. And inside of these two folders are your workspaces. Um, so workspaces is a terminology uh, in a mono repo. So basically each workspace have their own package.json. You can kind of think of it like that. So in our case, we have six different workspaces, each with their own package.json. Um, and, and the cool thing about a mono repo is that, you know, these different projects can reference each other similar to the way that you reference a particular NPM um, package. So maybe you want to Maybe you're in the API folder and you want to import something from database. You can just do like import blah from 
at database. Um, yeah, whatever name you chose for that package.json. So um, if you're not too familiar with monorepos, it's, it, it can be a little confusing, but I guess just bear with me a little bit. I'm not that familiar with them either. Um, but basically you have your apps folder inside of which is your expo app as well as your Next.js app. So um, yeah, so, and then you'll have your, your API in the backend. Um, you have an apps folder, and this is where most of your React code or React native code will go. Um, and yeah, database is just for initializing your schemas and things like that. And the UI package, the UI um, workspace is for individual components. Um, and the Tamagui stuff are in here as well. So you can create individual, you know, start components using Tamagui, put them in the UI, and then reference them in app. So it's pretty clean. Um, the way that it actually works uh, is that this Expo app will basically reference this app folder. And so these two folders are practically empty, aside from some minor setup stuff. And, <coughs> and they're both just referencing uh, screens instead of features, as well as like, you know, navigation or provider things. Um, so if you see in the actual example, yeah, instead of expo, if you go to app.tsx, it's just this. And likewise in next, um, in the index, you're literally just importing home screen from app slash features uh, slash screen. So that's kind of the, the folder structure of the app. So now let's dive into how you can actually get started. Um, so you can go to this page, which I think you probably are already on. Um, scroll to the bottom, and there are some step-by-step -step instructions that I'll go over with you right now. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to clone this, create a new repository. Let's call it test video demo zero, because I always have to redo these. <laughs> um, this might take a little bit to set up, not too long. But after this, the first step that we got to do is to, you know, make a local version of whatever is on here. So open with GitHub Desktop, I know. Um, I like the, I really do like it. And then, oops, open in VS Code. Um, let me close my other one. All right, so now we are here. The first thing that we got to do, scroll back down here, is to make sure that our package manager for our monorepo is the correct version and is set up correctly. You know, maybe in the future I can do these automatically, but um, haven't figured that out yet. So first of all, we've got to set the version to stable, the, the later ones. This won't work if you're on Yarn 1. So then we got to import workspace tools. Um, this allows us to run certain monorepo commands. And then we got to do yarn config set node linker node modules. So what this is, is that, um, you know how when you do npm install, you'll have a node module and inside of it's like a gigabytes of data. Um, and I think after yarn two in 2020, yarn came out with a new way to do that. That's smarter. That saves a lot of space, but that kind of messes up with their mono repo thing. Uh, maybe I can figure that out in the future as well, but currently just got to bear with me here. Um, and then we'll run yarn. This will install the necessary packages. Um, and then after this, we'll have to do yarn generate. So if you go to package.json, you'll see that I have created a few commands here. So studio is opening your database studio, your Prisma studio. Um, if you're not sure what that is, it's basically a, a web page that lets you see your database and interact with it. Um, yeah, we can dive into that a bit later. Uh, you can, you can kind of just ignore a lot of these. Um, yeah. And then we'll do yarn generate. As you can see here, yarn generate. Um, yeah, so this is, we're, we're just running Prisma generate here. And then we got to set up our environment variables. So because we're using uh, one clerk, we're using a database, we got to have uh, the correct environment variables for both of these. And I have created an example one here so I'm just gonna do make this a dot. Um, yeah, generally you don't want to show any, anyone this, but 
I'm probably gonna change these after the video. So yeah, and I've also included a dot .env dot example. So what you probably wanna do is to just just do just get rid of the dot example, and then change the yeah change the URLs to the one that you want. As for the database, we're we're currently using Superbase, but you can probably more easily just spin up a instance with Railway, just like like this, and literally within five to ten seconds they'll create one for you. Uh, so that is that. And there's one other catch with environment variable, um, and it's that we gotta manually add in this one variable for our expo. So you just copy this, do command shift F, search, search here. I left a comment, do the second one. And you gotta enter your, your front end thing here as well, um, your front end variable, your front end variable for clerk. Um, so you have to sign up for clerk, Dot dev, uh, it's pretty quick to sign up. Uh, if you see there, yeah, just sign up. And I think now we should be ready. Fingers crossed. Yarn web. Okay. Now this um the desktop app is right here. Okay, I don't know if you saw right there, but it said port 3001, um, not sure why. So I just closed that port, closed 3000, um, and now it should run on localhost 3000. So it won't work if your next J, it won't work for the expo side of things if your next JS app is not hosted on 3000. Um, and that's because we're, we're kind of manually setting that for our, our expo app. But now it should be on localhost 3000, which we can see right here as well. And if we do expo, I mean, yarn native, um, we should be able to run it right here as well. So, so this currently is a dead version. Let me just close it. If you don't have an iOS simulator, you'll probably have to download it or you can try on Android. To be honest, I haven't tested on Android, so there's a, there's a chance it might not work. Let's reload the app. Yeah, normally it should take a little bit, but it was fast. You like you saw that because I I had done this earlier. But on your first time, it should take probably five to ten seconds. But yeah, I think this is practically it. Um, both everything here and everything you see here, you will see there, is all in React Native. So this is React Native transpiled into React Native for web transpiled, transpiled by. Um, and all of the buttons and things like that are, all of the styling are done using Tamagui. And you can probably spend some time diving into uh, all of these components and things like that that I've created. But yeah, but the idea here is that if you just sign up with Clerk and create your own database, uh, you should be able to just get started and start making your app with everything that is necessary handled for you. Here's an example of how to do routing and things like that. Um, oh, not sure why that took so long. But yeah, hopefully you enjoy using it. If there's any questions, feel free to leave an issue. Thanks.